what's up guys Max here and welcome back to my dungeon today I have for you a product that I really enjoyed myself uh, uh, using this and overclocking it and testing it because this is a, a very great kit of memory this is the Patriot Viper Venom DDR5 6.2 uh, C40 that uh, use uh, Hynix uh, chip and this for me was uh, really uh, like a, a toy for a, for a child on the Christmas night. This uh, memory kit uh, is good at X XMP and it was also even better when I tried to Ochi and do some uh, tuning because uh, this kit is clearly a tier one kit. So a kit that you buy for performance because of the Hynix chip and because I, I think it's well selected because I tried one kit and this uh, kit that I tried is uh, a very great one, even in comparison with other kit of the, the same price and even superior. So uh, let's get straight to the point and let me show you the results of this amazing product. Before getting into the performance number, let's take a quick look to the aesthetics and dimension of uh, this kit. That is very important when you uh, select uh, the components for your build, especially when you use uh, an air cooler. If we look at the dimension of this kit, compared to the G-Skill Trident Z and the Kingston Fury Beast, we notice that uh, this is, uh, let's say, with a high height, because it's similar to the Trident Z, and in comparison with the Fury Beast that is uh, considered like a, a low-profile kit, we have uh, around one centimeter so difference. So if you are going to use this kit with an air cooler, you must take into the consideration of the dimension of this kit because the heat sink is uh, higher than another kit uh, like this that is a low profile if you take a look uh, at here you will notice that uh, we have a transparent piece of uh, plastic that uh, underneath there's uh, the RGB so this is an RGB kit the heat sink is pretty big and is aluminum and I have to say that is doing a pretty good job because uh, you can keep a low temperature without any type of uh, forced air cooling, so without active cooling. This is a kit that uh, is nice uh, uh, for letting cool itself. But at the same time, if you use um, a fan or some kind of uh, a high flow chassis or you know the uh, the AO kit. Uh, on top of your chassis that pushing the air downstream into the into the RAM, this is going to be very effective of cooling the chip inside. So now I think it's time to talk about performance. Okay, and here we have uh, the XMP profile. So we're talking about uh, the 12900KS overclock to 5.4 gigahertz. So a very uh, nice overclock on the CPU. And we have uh, like 194, 91, almost 92, and 64 uh, nanosecond of latency. That uh, overall is very nice for an XMP profile because uh, 6200 right now uh, is a good kit. But you know, later we will talk about overclocking that makes this kit really great. But still, even at, at, with an XMP profile for so for the lazy guys that doesn't want to tinker with memory, but I suggest you to do it. Anyway, if you leave an XMP, this kit will deliver its performance and is a nice kit. So the temperature is pretty low. So we have like 25 degrees in this room and we have 33. So that sink is doing clearly this job. As you can see here, the timings, uh, the XMP impact only the primary timings, but we are talking about secondary tertiary. Uh, the XMP leave uh, everything very loose uh, in order to get your profile very stable so you just load the XMP profile on a good motherboard of course and then you'll be able to play without any issue uh, but you, you you leave on the table a lot of performance but we will speak uh, about that uh, now and now talking about overclocking as you can see here I have a uh, uh, 6.8 uh, on the memory with C32 and the timings that are a bit tight not extreme, but for a good daily, this is truly remarkable. As you can see here, we had a very nice improvement overall. The latency is like, sometimes it's 52, now it's 54, it goes up and down, but usually you can you can have this type of performance with this type of timing and have like 52, 54. So this is the range. 
uh, this is uh, all for the uh, well selected uh, Hynix uh, chip because uh, this was a 6 uh, 2 C40 and now we are 6 8 uh, 32 this is a very very nice kit I played a bit with some more um, extreme settings like 1.6 volts and C30 uh, with uh, everything more tight and I was able to have like uh, 7200 and something so uh, this is a very tier 1 kit I really love this kit because you can do everything you can have a good daily and you can play as well in the extreme or clocking uh, stuff if you want to so this is a good kit as well for uh, our fellow extreme overclocker to to bin and try to rip some world records. So yeah, this is definitely a tier one kit. For the temperature now on idle, I have 33, 34, and in my room we have now 25 degrees. So it's not uh, it's not cool. So even with uh, um, let's say a moderate high temperature in the room. Uh, the memory performed quite well. The heat spreader are doing an efficient job. Uh, now I'm using an active cooler, so I have a fan, an Octua, that is pushing uh, cold air into the RAM. So another good point is that uh, the heatsink on the RAM, that is aluminium, is doing a great job. Because if I raise the, the rotation of the fan, I can really keep like uh, 42 degrees with uh, a stress test on. So these uh, uh, timings, this uh, kind of uh, daily setup, uh, he has gone through a 20 cycle of TM5. So it's rock solid stable. And with active cooling, it can go like 42, 43 degrees. So we have a very good head sink system. If I turn off the fan, this won't pass a couple of cycles. So Keep in mind that if you want to overclock and tune the DDR5, you must use active cooling. So if this is not possible in a uh, small chassis with a big GPU and no air at all. You, you can't. Anyway, let's move on. All right, so it seems that uh, I've said enough. You, you saw the performance. This is an extremely good kit, uh, even for the people that want just to load XMP and have a good base performance, or for one like me, or others that want to do some extreme overclocking or overclocking and needs a kit that can really push the limit of the motherboard because I have to say that I'm using the Kingpin Z690 that is a really great board for the memory and not every board can push to 6.8 or something like that so uh, to push this memory kit you need also a very good motherboard and a very good CPU to have an AMC that is capable of uh, uh, driving this memory kit to stretch the legs and you know go uh 7000 uh, and so on so, so on and so forth so this is a really a good kit that if you have good components can be really competitive even in extreme overclocking so my recommendation is that if you are planning on doing a, a ddr5 build uh, seriously consider this kit because i don't know yet the exit the launch price of this kit but for what i see online it seems pretty low so you have a top tier kit uh, with also a low uh, street price. So I think it's, it's going to be a must for everybody that is building a DDR5 kit. Anyway, as always, if you like this video and if you want to stay updated, click subscribe, the, the bell, you know the drill. And well, see you in the next one.